Hey, Dave Parrish here with Mac Builders doing another YouTube video. Um, today's topic, Mac Integromat in a Mexico City. Well, what's that? Um, for those who follow you, know that I earlier this year, or follow me, earlier this year I was down in Ecuador for three months. These are work, I call them work retreats, but first of all, I'm taking full advantage of um, remote work and digital nomad type of stuff. But uh, when I do these trips, I usually have some overriding work goal. Uh, last one, I was learning the new builder and working on a bunch of other sort of administrative marketing stuff for my practice. Uh, in this case, I left, I arrived yesterday in Mexico City, or to Mexico City. And uh, I'll be still be doing regular day-to-day -day work practice stuff. Uh, but one of the big things I want to learn while I'm down here and spend a lot of time on it is Integromat. Uh, for those who don't know that, it's sort of like Zapier, if you know what that is, but it's uh, integrating different cloud apps to other cloud apps. It's becoming more and more important. A lot of my fellow Mac builders are, are really good at it, uh, and I don't know it that well. I've really never been called on it by clients too much, but I think... Um, one of those things that some of the things is just I don't know what I don't know. Um, so my intent down here is to continue what I'm doing and then spend a lot of time on Integromat. I'll come back in a moment and uh, explain a little bit more. This is a sharing my life type of thing. I'm sorry, not a lot of Mac functionality in this, but if you find it interesting, um, please like the video. Thanks. Okay, folks, I'm back. And I apologize, I don't know if the video or audio is that great. Um, I don't have my, I just have my laptop, not my setup back home. But here's the deal. Um, yesterday I flew from Detroit uh, to Mexico City. Direct flight, $362 round trip. It's awesome. Um, it took less than four hours to get there. A um, couple shots in Mexico City. It's got like 20 million people. I've never been here. I mean, I've been to Cancun a couple times, but that's it. So this is a really interesting place. Um, uh, the center of Mexico City is right here. And I'm in this town or neighborhood called Coyoacan right here. Um, it's an older, sort of more colonial city that was eventually absorbed. By Mexico City itself. There's a couple shots. A coyote means coyote. There's a couple of coyotes. You know, it, it's more of a again authentic feel to it than just big urban stuff. Uh, okay, fun people, nice architecture. Uh, it's sort of an artsy thing. Here's something too that I just realized. This is in the picture I took, but the Day of the Dead, if you know what that is, that happens. Next month, later next month, I, think. I know it happens when I'm down here. It was all canceled last year because of COVID, but that's going to be interesting, if you know what I mean. Um, this town, Coyacone, where I'm in, is actually where Frida Kahlo is from. Uh, there's a museum a couple blocks from me. That's her house. Now it's a museum. And for your Russian history folks, Leon Trotsky was friends with her. He had to hit the road when Stalin was after him after Lenin died um, and Stalin sent his assassins here and killed him with a uh, mountaineering ice axe to his head a couple blocks from where I am. Fun stuff, huh? <laughs> okay, this is where I'm staying. Airbnb, Airbnb deal. It's this upper portion of one bedroom apartment. Uh, $600 and some a month. I mean, it, it's great. I get this uh, balcony here. There's me working with some coffee, a view of something, uh, bathroom in the back, kitchen, living room, bedroom. Okay. Pretty simple, but right in the heart of all kinds of stuff. There's me. The owners here live in, across the way. They gave me this hipster retro bike to cruise around the whole time. They just gave it to me. He's a violinist for the symphony here, and she's a... a Ball ballerina, ballet dancer for the main ballet in Mexico City. Artsy, hipster folks. Um, I'm glad I found this place. 
Uh, I also got a co-working space. It's a, just a short bike ride away. Typical co-working space. When you do these traveling, working things, you need one of those. You can't work in your apartment all day long, and there's only so long you can stay at a coffee house. Um, that's the deal. Uh, I'm there tomorrow morning. They don't open till 9. I don't know why. Why not 7? But hey, that's the way it is. Um, in Mexico, I'm on Eastern time at home here. Mexico's on Central time. That's one of the reasons I'm doing the Latin American deal. Not only do I have some experience here and speak some Spanish, um, a similar time zone is nice. I'd go to Barcelona or Poly or something. Those are big hot spots for digital nomads. But the time zone change will just cause problems. Another shot, I guess I can do work in the sun. Um, what else I got here? I think that was about it. Let me jump into <coughs> what my real topic is here. Um, NAC, <coughs> obviously, and dealing with Integramat. Integramat is, uh, they call it the glue of the Internet, but it, it connects um, different cloud apps with other cloud apps and, and also does all kinds of automation. I can't explain it all because I'm not an expert yet, but um, <coughs> dealing with data and making things work right. Um, here's an example they have, uh, and I don't even know all the details of it. Something is done with a Gmail. Some records are captured in a spreadsheet, Google Sheet. The email is looked at. In this case, what it's doing is looking at uh, attachments of photos. And in this case, it's taking each photo and it's aggregating them some matter and cr automatically creating a Facebook post. And at the same time, it's taking um, those photos, creating a zip file of them, and then insert them in an archive on your Dropbox. Okay, this is the type of stuff you do. To put it in more context for NAC, a real common use case is NAC does not do text messages. You could set up a scenario here. Let's say when a a salesperson is assigned a new sales lead. When you press submit on that form where you're assigning them, you could have NAC via Integramat talk to a service such as Twilio. That's the big texting service out there. And when you set up the scenario here, when it's assigned to that sales rep, it shoots the information via Integramat over to Twilio, and Twilio sends whatever content you want to the via a text to the salesperson saying, hey, alerting them, hey, you, you were just assigned a new sales. Uh, or another common use case is, uh, and this could go either direction, you create a new contact in your NAC CRM, and it creates them as a new customer in QuickBooks. Or vice versa, create a new customer in QuickBooks. It can automatically set them up in um, in NAC. So that's the deal. There's a a lot of depth to this. It can get really complicated. Basically, what Integramat is, if if, you, if the Integramat wasn't around, you'd have an API guy, a coder, writing special code to connect these things. And you know what that means, okay? Uh, expense, time, maintenance, ongoing, wet to that folk, person. And that's the same with NAC in terms of building databases. It's a low-code or no-code platform to build databases. What Integramat is is the same thing. It's a, uh, an API service that you can use uh, without writing a bunch of code. Um, and, and as far as I'm concerned, code just gets in the way. It's a thought process and the mechanics and understanding what you want to accomplish with data, where the real value is. Uh, code just gets in the way, and apologies any coders there. Um, so that's the deal. I will keep you informed. Next time I'm going to have something on NAC uh, functionality, uh, but I thought I'd let you know this. Thanks.